Hello there, and welcome to the Audio Epics podcast. This is Domin, and um, this is actually a little introduction. Uh, what you're about to hear is a recording that we made way back in July, um, on July 30th, which was Eline's birthday. That's when this podcast was recorded. And before we begin, I also want to thank our patrons, and in particular, I want to give our thanks to Dustin Garner, Yeezy Dusht, Liam Gabriel, Cameron Brantley, Cody Heitsch, Dragan Chirik, Caitlin Bredenkamp, Ryan Stock, Peter Strandkrone, Matt Patain, Osarian, Mix and Match, Kat Mosseri, and Joseph Stoll. All right, enjoy the podcast. Hello and welcome to the Audio Epics podcast. I am Domine. And I'm Eileen. And we thought that uh, today we'd do something a little bit different because today is a very special day. It's storytelling day. It is the birthday of a very special person, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right. That's right. <laughs> and since it's Arnold Schwarzenegger's birthday, um, we wanted to celebrate him by talking about a theme park in the Netherlands he's never been to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you make it sound strange. <laughs> no, uh, it's it's of course Eline's birthday, uh, also Arnold Schwarzenegger's birthday, but also Eline's birthday and her mom's birthday. But um, I asked her, "What do you want to do tonight?" And she said, "I want to do another storytelling podcast." And I said, "Okay, so what are we going to talk about?" And we've recently been uh, to our favorite theme park. Yeah. Um, with our uh, our sons, and it was actually a present for our oldest son's uh, first communion. And we love that theme park so much, and it has everything to do with storytelling, that we yeah. really wanted to do an entire storytelling podcast. Yeah, uh, because I know you say a theme park, that's cheesy and stupid, but... Uh, well, no, this one isn't. Um, and we're really big fans and uh it's as you will notice <laughs> yeah um and it's called the efteling and uh it's in the netherlands and you know those of you who have been listening to previous storytelling podcasts or watching our rare social media posts may have already heard about it the efteling is a theme park in the netherlands that has inspired us in our creativity for many years and that has definitely installed the seed of our interest in storytelling and writing for both of us. Yeah, exactly. So uh, let us tell you a bit about the, the history of the Efteling. Um, it, it used to be a farm in the 16th century named uh, Ersteling, a name probably referring to it being the first farm on a newly mined territory. Um, and then first in the, in the 1930s, it was a sports park with a playground. So nothing fancy, it, it had a steam carousel a high slide, a cableway, and a real pony ride. But all of that changed when they developed the a three-dimensional fairy tale forest in 1950, with plenty of movement to attract more tourists. They cooperated with a filmmaker and illustrator, Anton Peek. Now, Anton Peek, uh, as I've mentioned before, is my favorite illustrator. Um, yeah, he's awesome. And, you know, his style was very unique. Um, very uh, fairy tale esque, but also with a gothic edge to it. Um, the, he had a you know a completely unique uh, feel to his drawings, and absolutely, and you know the the fairy tale forest that they installed there, absolutely you know oozes with the the feel of his drawings. Yeah. So so this forest that brought numerous famous uh, fairy tales to life by means of mother technology, uh, was actually based on his, his drawings and his artwork, and it has changed uh, the park forever. So on May 31st, 1952, uh, that was the official opening of the Efteling. Now, um, why did it change from Ersteling to Efteling? It's, it's got something to do with the fact that the, the, the F, the way that it, w it was written in the old yeah, script, I, I believe so. looked a bit like an F. 
So the word Efteling doesn't mean anything. <laughs> no, it doesn't mean anything, but still it has this fantasy feel. Yeah, it I does. Think it, it does. It could be a, a kind of creature or or, yeah. or perhaps a, a country in a fantasy realm. But so, what I love about it is if someone asks what's an Efteling, well, it's the park. <laughs> there's, there's nothing, nothing else. else, yeah. yeah. Um, and that park gradually transformed into a world of wonders with an unmatched enchanting atmosphere that I don't think you can find anywhere else in the entire world. No, maybe uh, perhaps the the many rooms that have all the souvenirs uh, in it. Like our kids. Yeah. And then the, the Efteling introduced a lot of revo revolutionary cool ideas as well. Like Holobolle Gijs um, is actually a, a paper gobbler. So yeah, he's he's a fairy tale character. And, yeah, uh, I believe uh, it's, it's the equivalent of Humpty Dumpty, but I'm not sure. It's, uh, it's basically a very big, fat, hungry giant. Yeah, big, fat, um, hungry giant. Yeah. So they they <laughs> have, they've got a paper bin. Um, well, it's actually world famous this this paper bin, and it's probably the reason why the Efteling is such a a clean park because what it is is it's a statue of this big fat giant with a, his mouth wide open and he's constantly asking for food and the the, the open mouth is basically a vacuum cleaner and <laughs> kids can throw their refuse into into it and whenever you do so he says thank you yeah um, or or mm, this is tasty i've yeah. never tasted this good before uh, yeah. something like that and kids love it they absolutely yeah. love it. it it's it's so cool that they actually pick up uh other people's um, litter to just because they would be able to put it in the mouth. So <laughs> yeah. So it's a very clean park, and for obvious reasons, uh, Holobolle Gijs was the first um, of these paper devouring bins, but it wasn't the last because it's it's full of them and uh, they're awesome. And then over the years, the fairy tale forest was expanded with some, you know, culinary facilities, a lake for rowing and canoeing, and a swimming pool. And later, those latter two had to make place for numerous original theme park attractions, the first real attractions. So it wasn't really a theme park yet before, but no. then that started to... More to, like a recreational uh, yeah. park, a sports park, and then... It got a car ride, a miniature steam train uh, track, uh, a haunted house, boat rides, uh, a swinging ship, which uh, Liam really loves, <laughs> uh, a river rapids ride, a uh, water ballet uh, with light show that, uh, that's usually used to end a theme park day with. Uh, it's really, really beautiful. Uh, numerous playgrounds, indoor and outdoor roller coasters and many many other original attractions and rides then the theme park got its own motel uh, to welcome guests from all over the world um not uh, did i say motel i meant hotel, hotel yeah. obviously it, it's a it's a classy hotel um and you know they also expanded it with a theater with several shows and musicals they even got their own television ch channel that shows their, their own series and movies about their characters. Yeah, actually, so yeah. So it kind of evolved in the opposite direction of Disney, whereas Disney started with the... The, the, the movies. The movies, uh, and yeah. then added a theme park. This started as a theme park, and then they, in time they added, you know, animation and, series, and shows. Series, yeah, and shows. Um, now, of course, um, so... And a movie. Or a couple of movies. Yeah, but but they they're all kind of simple and and you know not very high budget. So it's no, not really. I mean, it's cute. It's, they're charming. Yeah, but it's not meant to in any way. It's not Disney quality. Yeah, it, it's not it's <laughs> not meant to be in, in competition with Disney when it comes to that. But when it comes to the park, it's me personally, amazing. I think it's way better than Disney. So people will say, okay, maybe some people will say, oh, a, a theme park with, with a fairy tale, uh, you know, concept. It's just like Disneyland, but then without the Disney brand. So they might think it's, you know, something, you know, more like a knockoff, something yeah. cheaper and discount Disney. This is nothing like that. You know, no. this is, 
It this breeds, is more, far more authentic than it Disneyland. It breeds the authentic uh, fairy tale yeah. atmosphere of uh, of Europe. Actually, yeah, it's m- more like a real European park. It's just got, whereas Disneyland has a Disney feel. This really has a fairy tale feel. It's it's very different. And I, I think we, we love the, the fairy tale forest and we love the attractions. I think our favorite ride in the Efteling is the Flying Dutchman, which is actually a, a combination of a log flume ride, an indoor and outdoor roller coaster and, and a dark ride. So it's, it's really something else. And if you've taken the ride and you've listened to the treasure of Boneyard Bay, you'll notice that we definitely were influenced by this theme park attraction. Absolutely. I can... Uh in fact, pinpoint some exact moments from that ride that made it into yeah, shoot <laughs> uh, <laughs> into the treasure of Boneyard Bay. So, uh, in the story, when uh, our friends are trying to find the crown of Kulmaron, and uh, they're in a little boat in the mist, you know, and uh, at in the front end of the boat there is this, you know, this um, bronze carving of a lion. A lion's head with a lantern in its mouth. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, When they're riding the little boat through the fog and 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 it's quiet and they they just hear the gulls through the mist. That's exactly what you experience in that attraction. Yeah, I immediately knew because (laughs) I I wrote the outline and when he filled in the 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 blanks and I I read that um, that chapter, I I really knew instantly that 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 had been his inspiration. (laughs) Yeah. So, um, why do we devote an entire storytelling podcast to the Efteling? Sure, it's a source of inspiration that has been there since our early childhood. Um, The Efteling, for us, is uh, only an hour to an hour and a half hour drive from home. So, it's not too far. And and it makes us actually feel privileged to live in in Flanders. That's that's one of the good reasons to live in Flanders, at least. And uh, from the the theme parks we have visited in our childhood, it was definitely our favorite. And our sons are absolutely obsessed with it now. Um, Our friends once uh, paid for an overnight stay in the Efteling as as a bachelor and bachelorette party gift. And that was really an amazing experience. Only recently, uh, mid-July, we had the pleasure to return there, as we mentioned before, with our two sons and stay over there again as a gift for our uh, eldest um, first communion. And it was the best gift imaginable for him uh, and for us, as we all enjoyed our stay very much. And of course, we're also recording uh, this storytelling podcast because the Efteling is paying us a billion dollars for it. No. <laughs> no, actually, no. They don't know we're doing this podcast. Um, th- this is pure, honest genuine gushing yeah from us we just we 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 love to gush from time to time (laughs) but uh, Um, the yeah the main the main reason why we wanted to talk about the efteling in our storytelling podcast is because it has everything to do with storytelling it is the ultimate example of how storytelling can have a world altering influence the efteling has storytelling in every aspect of the park and I, I mean that literally. Yes. And before we delve into that in more detail, let's talk about the tea we're having. Oh, um, but it's, it's the same tea, I think, as one of our last uh, podcasts. We call it the white tea of Minas Tirith. It's uh, ah, wa- yes. white tea from the Tea Masters brand. And it's white tea with, I believe, raspberry flavor. I thought there was vanilla in there. As well? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it's, it's brilliant. It's really good. It's, brilliant. it's the champagne of the teas. But we, we've discovered a new brand of tea, which yes. is also awesome. So We should uh, get more as, of it. As, as I may have <laughs> mentioned a couple of times, um, I'm a librarian. Uh, that's my Clark Kent job, as uh, Jack Ward likes to put it. <laughs> um, and, um, and the library where I work... They just uh, bought new tea for the employees from a brand which is called Palais de Thé. And man, that's, oh, that tea is so awesome. I just can't get enough of it. And I'm jealous because yeah, I'm working really at good. home. And but I, I take some, I some bags. It. I smuggle some bags in uh, 
you know, home sometime. Now they're gonna sue us. <laughs> no, I don't think so. It's there. It's a law firm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. It, uh, it's it's a it's a legal library. So um, I'm gonna have a sip of tea because I'm really thirsty, and then we're gonna start. We're gonna talk about how the Efteling has storytelling in every aspect of it. All right. So that was our tea break. Now let's yeah. talk about. Because we uh, we uh, went to the. A tropical swimming pool to celebrate my birthday with the guys, with our little guys. And we had french fries, which are actually Belgian. <laughs> and there was a lot of salt on them, so probably that's why you're so thirsty. Not that everyone is interested in that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how does the Efteling have storytelling in every aspect of the park? Well, it starts with the structure and layout. There's different realms in the park. Other theme parks do this too, but so does the Efteling, of course. Um, we could roughly tr uh, translate them from Dutch as the journey realm, the fantasy realm, the elsewhere realm, the fairy tale realm, and uh, the rough realm. Um, yeah, something like that. Yeah. But, you know, um, the thing is, other parks do this, like Disneyland, but this is only the first of many ways in which storytelling plays its part in the Efteling. Yeah, like, um, as we mentioned before, the, the fairy tale forest is really unique. Um, you have all the classic fairy tales in one place here, and also a couple of less well-known ones, and, uh, or, or well-known in Europe, but uh, new outside of Europe. You can visit uh, Grandma's house where Little Red Riding Hood is ready to enter and the wolf is hiding in the bed in Grandmother's clothes. Uh, that's a mm -hmm. classic. Uh, you can see the witch climbing up Rapunzel's braid uh, to the top of the tower. You can play a uh, knock-knock gingerbread house <laughs> and wait for the witch to appear uh, with Hansel locked up in a cage in the distance. Uh, you can visit uh, leprechaun houses, uh, the fairy tale tree, which is basically a talking tree who tells fairy tales. Uh, admire the Emperor's new clothes, uh, witness Rumpelstiltskin reveal his name, watch the seven young goats play a board game while the wolf is licking his lips outside, etc. So you're in for a treat if you love fairy, fairy tales. Pinocchio is there as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, you're not just a witness to seeing these fairy tales come to life. Most of them are interactive. So you can summon the Troll King by fiddling with the hands on his astronomical compass. Or you can call out Tom Tom's name and make him appear uh, from between the giant's legs. Yeah, he's trying to steal the giant's boots, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you can witness uh, Lady Holler. I don't know if that's uh, a fairy tale. I think that's it's, really a, it's a Dutch fairy tale. So yeah. I don't think they know it. In so you can you can uh, witness her fluff up her pillow and make it snow by mm -hmm. simply touching the handle of her gate, and you can anger the dragon by touching yeah. the golden crown in the treasure chest he's guarding. So uh, kids are having yeah, a blast with it. You know that. what I love is when you go to the, um, the gingerbread house um, with the witch, they make it s smell like gingerbread and candy. Yeah, we're going to talk uh, about that. Yeah, later. okay. Yeah. And then there's the dark rides. Um, I guess the dark rides are most obviously driven by storytelling. So you've got the Droomvlucht, uh, the dream flight, which takes you to a magical place where fairies and trolls live. Uh, then there's the Fata Morgana, which catapults you right into the Arabian Nights atmosphere. Carnival Festival uh, takes you to the original world of the jester Yoki and his little bird friend Yet. Um, Love two lovely Efteling characters. And then there's the dark ride Symbolica, which invites you to an audience with the king. But the palace jester, Bardus, who is an original Efteling character as well, encourages you to disobey the rules and come along with him through a secret passageway to visit the palace treasures room instead. These dark rides are visually absolutely marvelous and they have their own unique feel and look which is very much based on the drawings the illustrations of Anton Peek and every part of the ride is carried by storytelling even waiting in line is and that brings us to waiting in line even queuing is fun in the Efteling for some people who are not fond of roller coasters or dark rides 
it can even be the best part. <laughs> um, most rides have an, an introduction that makes waiting in line less boring, and it makes time pass really fast. Uh, the wooden coaster, as well as the junior coaster, are nested in a story that uh, involves a race between uh, two themes. Um, in Joris and the Drak, or uh, George and the Dragon, two roller coasters, the fire and the water theme, uh, uh, theme not theme, uh, compete with every new ride to, to win the race. Yeah, so it's basically two roller coasters. Yeah. Um, and they're in competition with each other. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, yeah, being on the winning uh, team or not, it's, it's actually uh, determined by chance, right? I love how George and the Dragon, that ride, um, is entirely made out of wood. It's a wooden roller coaster. Yeah. Um, and along the way, they've got all of these, you know, they've got knight's armors and these banners and stuff. And it really makes you feel like you're in in some hall of some some king and his knights um. yeah it's it's amazing for an outdoor wooden roller coaster to have actually a, a theme and a story that's just and you can see the dragon uh, blowing fire at you as you're riding the coaster yeah if if you're paying attention of course because <laughs> some people are just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and not noticing the dragon at all. So I just wanted to um, mention that as well. And uh, in Max and Moritz, uh, it's two befriended rascals who build their yeah. own vehicle to race each other, and you have to join either uh, Max uh, Max's blue team or Moritz's green team when you uh, get on the junior coaster. Yeah, so that's also two coasters yeah. who are in competition. Yeah, and and while queuing, you can you can see them. Uh, Building, building stuff, and uh, yeah. they have all kinds of. It's really cool. Um, oh, there's a piano uh, in the in the waiting line. Uh, it's it's made out of fart cushions for the kids to play with. Yeah, our kids love that. And yeah, yeah there are all kinds of uh, little notes, uh, tiny notes, and jokes planted everywhere in reference to the story. So that's that's really, uh, really cool. And then you, you have another uh, special attraction uh, in the Efteling as well that you're fond of and not fond of at the same time, right? <laughs> yeah, so I've got mixed feelings about this one. Uh, the thing is, uh, Villa Volta is, um, yeah, it's kind of a madhouse. Um, it starts with a great atmospheric audio drama and the story takes place in Belgium, in, in, the, in Flanders. And it's based on old legends um, from our our parts from back in the 18th yeah. and 19th century and about uh, a gang of thieves yeah the Bokkerraders uh, who would ride goats flying goats actually oh really well according to some versions uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you know um, they were a gang the, the gang probably did exist I'm not sure um, but there are uh, there are all kinds of legends and, and, and creepy stories about them and and they, they they just they evoke that and tell that story so well while you're waiting in line to get into the attraction. The yeah. attraction itself is when you're sitting uh, in a chair and you're in a you know this sort of 19th century villa, and then you know ghostly stuff starts happening and the whole house turns upside down. But that's what it feels like. Yeah, of course <laughs> that not that's not what happens. If you look yeah. at your hair, it's not standing yeah. straight. So it's it's kind of they, they mess around with your mind a bit. It's a mind F. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it makes me feel completely disoriented and a little nauseous. But it's still really cool. So that's why I had mixed feelings. But you don't really have to queue up very long for this attraction and uh, you first you enter a room where uh, this audio drama takes place uh, from the the point of view of the the people who run away from the the gang, mm -hmm. uh, and there, there's fires going on and, and pillaging and raiding, and it's 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 a, it's a mess. Then you go to the next room, <laughs> and you hear the point of view of uh, Hugo, the 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 chief of the yeah. the raiders, um, uh, who actually took something from a church, and you know. Yeah, he, he robbed the church, and yeah. then an, an angel appears and basically says he will never know rest, right? Yeah, and that's when. After that, you you enter the house and he, uh, he, he calls it an, an accursed house. He says, uh, 
he never he will never find rest anywhere in his life mm -hmm. so when, wherever he lives wherever he goes and that's actually the the attraction is the the result of that but it's so it's so well done it's similar uh, with the flying dutchman the, the the whole story is um you know that he um he was a captain of a ship and um he basically cursed himself to um to be doomed to sail the seas forever and ever um yeah Anyway, oh, yeah. and and the the story of the the Baron Baron uh, yeah it? Baron eight, eighteen ninety eight yeah there was a number I keep yeah. forgetting um, it's a dive coaster it's it looks really scary we've never done it before because we got small kids uh, at at one point I would really love to do that um, but again it, based on an existing legend yeah it has a similar legend right yeah. uh, with doom and gloom uh, someone yeah. takes something and pride gets comes before the fall and yeah. Then Ghosts appear and actually say that pride comes before yeah. the fall, and then so you fall. <laughs> we we haven't uh, we haven't done that right yet, but we've we've watched it on on uh, the YouTube channel of the Efteling, um, which we will um, sh yeah. we yeah. will link in the description. You can so experience can... the ride in 360 degrees on YouTube. Yeah, so you can look I... around while you're. But even they they put all their rights uh, on YouTube, but even then. You, it's not like it, being there. No. It's not, not a bit like just being there no, and experiencing true. the whole thing. It's, uh, it's nothing, nothing like it. And another thing that has storytelling is the eating and drinking facilities. Uh, most eating and drinking facilities have a theme and a cool name related to stories and fairy tales. Um, maybe for Americans that's not new because we've been to America and I have the impression that themed restaurants are not really... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Strange. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I, I think it's a brilliant idea. I would make every restaurant, uh, <laughs> I would give every restaurant a theme. But for someone coming from Flanders, where every restaurant is just a, restaurant. a place <laughs> with tables and glasses yeah. and cutlery, it's really unique to, to, uh, to dine at the Efteling. Um, for example, in the Fabula Grotto, that is uh, named after the 3D movie playing uh, in the park. You can eat food related to the attraction. So there's actually three types of burgers, uh, for example, related to the locations in the movie. There's an indoor playground for the kids uh, with the characters from the movie and lots of projections and things to discover. So you can actually just feel at ease and eat yeah. while the kids are playing. <laughs> after they've uh, eaten as well, of course. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, there is also a, a restaurant with a, a fairy tale team, a tap room atmosphere, uh, a circus-like decor. There's all kinds of different restaurants. Eating and drinking in the Efteling is always a multi-dimensional experience. Everywhere there are uh, children's menus, by the way. So it, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. There's always uh, a special, special kids menus uh, everywhere. Yeah, and they do something a little bit, you know, playful with it every time. Yeah. And then the restrooms, yes, even the restrooms have a theme and a decor, you know. Um, if you gotta go, you gotta go, but it's so much more fun if you can do your business in a foresty theme or with a fairy tale character around. <laughs> um, and then, of course, the hotels and the hotel rooms. Well, it's needless to say that if you spend the night in the Efteling, in the Efteling Hotel or one of the hotels or huts in the nearby holiday resorts, the fairy tale theme is never far away. I remember there was a mouse hidden in the room when we stayed at the hotel in 2015. Yeah, right. That was awesome. Right? And there was also a, a board game. I think it was chess or or, um, or checkers. Yeah, something like that. I think a chess board, but fairy tale themed as well. Yeah. It was fixed to a stool, so it was there permanently actually. And and there were uh, fairy tale themed soaps and shampoos. And we didn't even so get a, a, you know, one of the themed suites, you know. They had sev several yeah. suites like, really themed after yeah, they're, a specific... Yeah, they're a bit more expensive, yeah. but they are amazing. We are, we are dreaming about uh, the, the Flying Dutchman suites. That, <laughs> oh, that's, that, that looks amazing. But then you spend all your time, you know, uh, being amazed with your room. But you, know, yeah. <laughs> you want to go visit the park. <laughs> yeah. After we've uh, admired the room, we can visit the park. <laughs> so, 
So there is a Cinderella suite, there's a little Red Riding Hood suite, a Snow White suite, a Fata Morgana suite, a Circus suite, Carousel suite, The King suite, um, Hansel and Gretel suite, my missing one, a Sleeping Beauty suite. I didn't know any of that. And many, you did many, some extra many, research. Many other things. Oh yeah, it was. I was. The the day I got back, I was I was just dreaming about returning already. Uh, right. <laughs> uh, oh, there's even a Coca Cola suite. I'm not quite sure why they have it, but hey, it's there. It's probably because Coca Cola is sweet. Yeah, probably. Uh, I, I I'm I'm actually uh, I don't really like that because I don't think it's very fairy tale like, and it it feels more like something Disney would do. So. Yeah, it's true. Um, but, but hey, it's better than the regular uh, no theme room, I guess. Um, but but one day. Oh, if it were Nuka Cola. <laughs> yeah, that would that would be cool for the the new attraction mm -hmm. about the the wasteland. The wasteland. <laughs> but uh. but um, yeah, one day if all our hard work finally pays off, I'm booking that Flying Dutchman suite. I've had my my eyes on for like a lifetime. And our kids would love it as well. I think they would love it. That there's even a, a hole in in the the ceiling that suggests you're like in a boat that's damaged, a damaged boat. <laughs> I should I should see some pictures because I, I didn't know any any of this. We're just really enthusiastic about this place, and we, we want to share it with you. And yes. We know that a lot of our listeners probably live too far away. Yeah. But or, still. Yeah, and if you ever visit Europe, you might plan a visit to Europe and, and forget about the Atomium, forget about Manica Piss. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Forget yeah. about uh, France. <laughs> I mean, the Eiffel Tower is it's just... Uh, the Eiffel Tower is probably the ugliest thing in Paris. It looks like a... What does it look like, actually? Like An antenna. An an like it, yeah, it's sort of TV antenna. antenna. It's the stupidest thing ever constructed. And it's, and it's it, They made huge. it the symbol of France. I don't get why. They have the Notre Dame. And then... Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, and then they burn that down. And, <laughs> and, everyone, <laughs> and everyone loves the stupid Eiffel Tower. I don't get it. Okay, this is... Uh, they didn't burn it down on purpose. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I was <laughs> just, jo just joking. Unless you believe the conspiracy theories about uh, that, are there? I guess. I didn't know that they were... There are conspiracy theories yeah. about everything. Okay. But uh, ba back, back to, to the, the Efteling. Efteling in the uh, Netherlands, a bit more uh, up north, uh, which is a paradise for children. We were born and raised in the 80s, where you took your children practically everywhere. They were invited to uh, New Year's Eve par parties, weddings, births, etc. Births? So, really? Yeah. Like actual <laughs> like with births? No, bir birth birthday I, parties? I, I, didn't, I, I didn't know that. <laughs> I've never experienced that. <laughs> No, I don't think so. No, I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, birth parties or, or how do you? Oh, you know, like celebration you know, parties. Visiting the for... visiting mother and child in the hospital. Is that what you mean? Or they usually do these parties, right? I don't know what, what they are called or how they do them. Uh, these days, they have these things called baby bottle, right? Yeah. Which is like basically. A party for when a baby w has been born, yeah, and you invite the whole family. So yeah, because not ever, not everyone does the baptism anymore. So so uh, yeah, I don't know. So some some birth thing, let's call it a birth thing. <laughs> and kids were invited, and often we we feel like these days the situation is the opposite. You have to get a babysitter for every party, as children are considered a burden for a lot of parents. I think a lot of parents feel sort of social pressure to leave their kids at home because yeah. they're, they're afraid other people will mind, I and think. You just cannot involve them if you want to have fun and relax. And we find, perhaps because a part of us never stopped to be uh, a child... <laughs> they were still a bit stuck in the 80s. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Th that we have the most fun with our kids. Um, maybe we just happen to have awesome kids, that's also possible but we love being with them as much as possible and we hope they won't turn their backs on us when they reach puberty and want us uh, as far away as possible but for example for our birthday instead of uh, getting a babysitter or having a romantic dinner for two we prefer to hang out with our kids which and is what we did today yeah and they are just mini virgins of ourselves and and they are so unique 
uh, at the same time. And we love them so much. So a trip to the Efteling is just the perfect activity for all of us. Yes, and in the Efteling there are attractions and playgrounds for all ages. But not just that. During our last stay in one of the more affordable uh, Efteling accommodations, um, which was, oh yeah, another hotel. At Lonsa yeah. Land, it was named. Our kids both had top bunk beds with a curtain. Um, and they loved it. And they asked us if we could live there forever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I said, yes, of course. And so we yeah. stayed there and we were now recording from our hotel room. <laughs> No, I was sad. I had to say no because I'm the no person in the family. Because um, we had a shower in our hotel room. That's a luxury we don't have at home. So, yeah, we, we stink all the time. No, we, we have a bathtub. Um, so the shower alone was totally worth it for us uh, and the children. In the park, there are smaller toilets and washing basins for children. You can rent hand carts and every restaurant has a children's menu and children's seats available. In one restaurant, you'll get a bowl in the shape of the hood of a flying agaric. That's, um, yeah. that's a type of mushroom. With the typical type room. of mushroom associated with, yeah. well, we would say kabouters. There's not really an Leprechauns? equivalent. Gnomes, I guess. Nope. Gnomes. Gnomes, yeah. P um, perhaps. Yeah. So the, this toadstool is uh, very iconic for the Efteling. You'll get a musical stem with your plastic bowl as well. And you can take it home as a souvenir. And that way children can always <clears throat> take a bit of the magic and atmosphere of the park along. Uh, the, um, the fly agaric is actually, it's, it's planted at several parts of the, um, the fairy tale forest. Mm -hmm. And they're musical, right? So they're Yeah, so they're not real ones. They're really big ones. Yeah. Um, and you can sit on them. Yeah. And they play music. And it's very iconic for the Efteling. Yes. Uh, every child should have a picture of uh, them sitting on one of these toadstools. Harpsichord music, not the latest hits, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so um, that way children can always uh, yeah, take a bit of the magic back home. In another restaurant, you get an Efteling-themed plastic plate with your children's menu. So you get all kinds of merchandise uh, with your menus. And you, get a, you can get a whole collection of items if you visit the park often and then you um, try one restaurant one day and another restaurant the other day. So, so of course, um, oh, there are many stores as well with merchandise that will make their little hearts beat faster. So it's, uh, for children, it's, it's a paradise. But for the disabled and elderly, it's also a paradise. <laughs> I thought you were going to say it's hell. It's, <laughs> it's not. No, even, even you know, anyone can enjoy a trip to the Efteling. You can easily rent a wheelchair, even a motorized one. Um, we even considered doing that for you because you have, were having trouble with your foot. Yeah, um, I, I don't know what it's called. The, it's, yeah, my, my, my right foot is... Uh, it's Lopped off. Yeah, dysfunctional. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it hurts a lot. Um, many rides have separate entrances for people in wheelchairs and you won't believe this but in some rides getting people with special needs aboard even becomes a part of the attraction. Um, in the Yoki and Yet dark ride at some point during the ride um, usually the cars stop and a voice announces that a band is passing through and you hear this fanfare music and gets more of a marching band vibe bum, bum, mm -hmm. bum, bum, and then you know that stops when the band has passed and the voice announces, okay, the cars can move on again. And usually, whenever that happens, that's when a person uh, with physical challenges is getting onto the ride with help, uh, which, you know, takes a bit longer. Um, and, yeah. uh, you know, it's amazing how they, you know, even yeah. make it part of the of the show. In yeah. a way. I mean, so, so they make it work in such a way that it, it you know, the... the the show goes on, you know? Yeah, exactly. When I when I first realized this, I was baffled. Because uh, I, I was always wondering about the the band music. Uh, what what it's all about? What 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 is this all about? The That the cars uh, suddenly stop for a while. Yeah. Why is that? And then I, I witnessed it. And also, I was, yeah, I was um, for the dream flight, uh, for people who can't get into the, the, the carts, the, 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 the flying guards mm -hmm. that, um, there's a, there's a separate 
virtual dream flight uh, they can do really? with uh, virtual reality goggles. Wow, I did yeah. not know that. Yeah. So wow, that's they even amazing. installed that. Uh, that's awesome. I did not know that. Wow. So you, you will feel right at home. Um, everyone feels right at home at the Efteling. All cultures are represented as well. There are uh, fairy tales represented from all over the world. Uh, Yuki and Yat is a dark ride that reminds of... Uh, it's a small world, I believe it's called, in the Disney parks. It has all cultures represented and some attractions are set in Aus uh, Austria, others in France. Yeah, so um, they've got this little sort of Austrian village, um, which is where the Max and Moritz um, yeah. roller coaster is, is located. But, you know, um, the whole place just, um, they made it feel like you're, you're in a little village in Austria. Um, yeah, the Efteling is kind of a mini world. Yeah. Food comes from all kinds of different pla places around the world. There are fairy tales straight from our uh, Catholic heritage tales with a more New Age vibe to, a, to them. Uh, or from more uh, southern tribes. Uh, yeah, like, uh, like the, the, everywhere. the piranha, which is like a, a wild ride. Uh, um, more um, like a Mexican theme. Yeah, it's got, it's got a, a bit of a, a <clears throat> Mesoamerican cool Inca style. theme. Yeah, actually, yeah, the, the Kulmaron cool stuff was somewhat inspired by some of this, some of the artwork and, 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 and sculptures you see there. Yeah, definitely, so. definitely. So, the Efteling takes storytelling to a whole other level by playing all five senses throughout the park. Yeah, and we've already talked about the visuals. The park is visually gorgeous. Even if you don't do a single ride and just take the scenery in, you're going to have a wonderful time. Every corner has an ornament. Every piece of furniture is carefully constructed or selected to get you immersed in another world. When you return from the Efteling, you don't remember how you drove home. It's like you just suddenly appeared home, like you traveled <laughs> home from another dimension through a portal. Really? Yeah. Maybe you shouldn't drive next time. <laughs> well, yeah. um, <laughs> I can imagine you in traffic like, la, 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 in the club. <laughs> <laughs> Humming the th the tunes from the the park. No, but it's true. Um, um, people who drive will uh, <laughs> will actually yeah. um, know what I'm talking about. That that you're uh, you're just driving on autopilot, and um, you will you will feel like you got back from Narnia while you weren't really ready to return home yet. Because everything looks fantastic there. Even the roofs are made gorgeous. Uh, when they place solar panels, they don't just put them wherever. Uh, they make patterns and surround them with plants, so the whole remains visually pleasing to the eye. It's, it's marvelous. They must have a, 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 an entire team of designers there. Yeah, obviously. The, Very I mean, talented people. It's amazing. Then touch, you know, which is also one of the five senses. Throughout the park, um, there are several different structures, things you can touch. And of course, you want to touch everything because we're all toddlers deep inside, <laughs> and it, it all looks so pleasing. You know, the, in the Fabula 3D movie experience, um, it's actually more 4D because it's not just the 3D visual effects, but there's also wind coming from grids, giving you the illusion of movement several times. The benches you sit on, you know, they they they're they're also in on it. Uh, <laughs> you know that during during the, yeah. the movie. A tree breaks. You can feel the bench breaking underneath you. Yeah, that's uh, cool. it's it's fun. It's really fun. Uh, but they do that. I I've, apparently they do that in some uh, movie theaters for big blockbuster movies too. Now, 4DX it's called. I think. Oh wow! Um, do you have that in Belgium? Yeah, yeah. You could watch Avatar two in 4DX apparently, but wow. So um, if you fall from a tree, you'll feel it. I don't know. I, I guess it's got something to do with moving chairs or something. I, I don't really know. I haven't experienced that yet. Cool. So yeah, they use wind in various rides to make you feel like you're really there. It's uh, it's it's a uh, yeah, and that's one of the reasons why this is really an experience that should be on your bucket list. Um, um sound, sound is also Watching the YouTube thing. videos will not quite cover it. So, so yeah. Sound, the Efteling Park is full of life, and, and you hear that, um, you know. 
Expect, of course, the typical roller coaster tycoon sounds surrounding you. Uh, if you've ever played that, <laughs> you know, legendary video game. Oh, yeah. Hours from and back hours in the day. <laughs> uh, but the sound uh, of silence and birds calling as well. Many rides have small audio plays or radio dramas, sort of. You can, for to get into the mood with sound effects. The Efteling is also famous for its musical fly agarics in the fairy tale forests. We've mentioned them before. Mm hmm. Uh, what they actually play is the Menuet in G major from the Notenbuchlein for Anna M. Bach by composer Christian Petzold, who was a friend to the Bach family. And moreover, most attractions in the Efteling, uh, and that's actually my favorite part, is that most attractions have their own original theme created by a composer, and it adds really a lot to the atmosphere and experience. And I just want to mention that I think the music the original tracks for um, for their attractions is up there with the best movie soundtracks. They're it's awesome. one of the reasons why I love the park so much as a, you know, a big movie score fan. Uh, the music is really, really terrific. And you can find it on Spotify. We'll make sure to share the links. Uh, the music of the Efteling has inspired us throughout many stories and you should definitely listen to it. Yes. Especially, you know, uh, something like uh, the Symbolica ride, that, that score. It sounds like it was composed by James Newton Howard. Uh, oh, it's marvelous. The Symbolica ride, uh, by the way, is not... Um it's, it's fairly recent, right? Yeah, it's um, one of the more recent ones. I think it's uh, from... It's maybe five years like old? About ten years uh, old, maybe. Ten, oh, no. oh, maybe. Is it ten already? Could be, could could be could less, be I don't know. I don't know, but it's, it's, uh, it's fairly recent compared to the... Some of the other attractions are really old, like they were there when I was a child, which is ages ago. Um, <laughs> you were once a child? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna say okay, how many, we've only, many years ago. Okay, we've only had three senses. Talk about smell. Yeah. Uh, do I smell? No, I want you to talk about the smell. Okay. Because you have yeah, you we, have a very very perceptive nose. Yeah, yeah that's true. Um, yeah, but, you know, we've mentioned that we don't have a, a shower and stuff. No. Um, <laughs> some of the fairy tales in the fairy tale forest. And a lot of the dark rides have their own smell. And this also adds a lot to the whole experience and gets you immersed a lot quicker in the sto in all the stories, actually. And of course, you can you can buy the scents afterwards in the shops. Uh, so we have Fata Morgana smell and uh, Droomvlucht, uh, the dream flight smell. We have it at home, ready to spray around in our living room whenever we miss physically being there. Uh, we're not obsessed. It sounds a bit sad <laughs> when you put it like that. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, and, and, and as Dumin mentioned before, when you visit the gingerbread house in the fairy tale forest, you can actually smell the candy and the gingerbread. It's like you've been transported into the fairy tale, which is awesome. Yes, there's uh, also at Mesh met the Zwavelstock is the the girl with the matchsticks. Um, I don't know if it's well known the story in English. I'm not sure. Um, but it's it's a really sad uh, story. It's in the fairy tale forest. You have to enter a, a castle, and then you can see the story unfold mm -hmm. with um, with these you know life-size puppets and projections yeah, and stuff and yeah, music. It's amazing. And it it takes place um, New Year's Eve at night, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in the winter, and there's lots of snow, and it, and they put you in that atmosphere by you know when you enter the castle everything smells like burning coals like yeah like on a cold winter night um just yeah, wanted to mention that's that. true that's true so you're immediately transported into yeah into the fairy tale that way it's that's awesome um taste like we've mentioned before the effling pays attention to detail so um in an ocean themed restaurant you'll find a salmon burger with seaweed and it will taste really well 
Um, I would say it tasted divine, but yeah, but I <coughs> I, I preferred the savanna burger with uh, ratatouille. But okay, it's clear that <laughs> they don't mess around with themes without making sure it's all delicious as well. Um, you can challenge your taste buds in the more exotic, internationally or fantastically themed restaurants, or just stick with the typical Belgian and Dutch meals, or you know more. Uh, German Austrian themed yeah, ones yeah, you in got, the. Uh, and you even have pancakes. If, if you're of course, yeah. The, the Dutch love pancakes. And the French and Belgians and uh, I think everyone loves pancakes. Yeah, but they all <laughs> they all make them in different ways. In fact, I think the number one location for pancakes in the world, the pancake capital, <laughs> maybe I think, is in France, in in uh, Brittany. Yeah. Because we've been there. Uh, Bretagne. They eat pancakes like we eat yeah. bread. It's like wherever you go, you can't find a normal restaurants. You you just can't find them. All you see is pancake places. Yeah. And they have pancakes with with muscles. with muscles on them and and with fried eggs on them and you know they they have all kinds of pancakes. If you it's can insane. imagine it and it's a food, they have it on a pancake. Yeah. A typical you... Dutch thing, peanut sauce. They have that. It's really good. Yeah, so unless you're allergic, you should really try it. It's really tasty. Um, they have satay with peanut sauce in the Efteling. Yeah, to, to end this podcast about the Efteling, we do have some worries for the future of the park because, you know, we're, we're such um, mad fans, obviously. Um, there have been complaints about stereotypes, but... Not from us. Not from us, of course, <laughs> but but uh, yeah, some some would say, for example, the and and probably it's a small world will will have gotten those same complaints uh, right, as yeah. well. That uh, the way they portray the the different uh, countries uh, in the world is a bit stereotypical. No, it, it's extremely stereotypical, and, and yeah, that's true. Uh, it's it, it's completely and utterly stereotypical. Like they have the the Japanese uh, when you know the. You, Taking photographs. Yeah, you, you see these little guys bowing to you with cameras and stuff. I mean, it's it's ridiculously stereotypical, and yeah. I love it. But <laughs> Belgium as well, right? Yeah, they do it with everyone. We're walking around with yeah. a big bag of fries with mayonnaise, yeah. and that's I mean, like, that's all we have are. Have a sense we're... of humor about it, people. <laughs> I mean, come on. We we have embraced the fact that we're just walking uh, bags of fries with mayonnaise, and we're fine with it. It's it's what it is. It's the world seen through the eyes of a child. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so yeah, we hope it will always stay on this course, and that they won't have to close the most iconic attractions because of the complaints of people who are just, I think, uh, offended by everything. Um, there is. I think that kind of stuff is kind of winding down. I, I no. really hope so. I think it was at its peak a few years ago, but I think it's it's winding down now. You you had this uh, attraction, Monsieur Cannibal. Um, right, that, but I can understand why that, that was That was actually um, twirling cooking pots with yeah. people in there. Yeah, and there, there was this, <laughs> in the middle, a big statue of, you know, uh, uh, basically a cannibal. Yeah, you know, with, from, with from bone, the jungle with a bone, with a through, bone his nose. through his nose. So it was really, so, yeah, yeah. It was it was kind of insensitive, maybe. Yeah, and that but has been replaced uh, in the meantime by Sirocco, which is uh, more like trading barges, uh, also twirling uh, from the Adventures of Sinbad, uh, which uh, is actually when it comes to the theme, it's it's much better. It fits the park uh, way better. It, so yeah, that's, it, that's it, actually a it actually cool adds addition. to the Arabian Nights feel of yeah. the nearby other attraction. Um, the and the music is way better, so so that's good. Uh, yeah, now now they made it into something cool. I mean, I would I won't get onto it because it's basically the the teacups from Disneyland, and I hate that stuff. It makes me completely and utterly nauseous. Uh, yeah, motion. <laughs> I, get, I get motion sick, so it's not for me. Um, yeah, and uh, and I think another thing that kind of worries us a little bit is the smartphone QR domination. Like it's it's a modern park with all the modern facilities. Uh, you order your tickets and you get your reservation online, and you use QR codes for everything, even to unlock your hotel room and the parking lot, which is actually quite wow. It's it's, it's yeah, it's, it's kind of amazing. And um, 
when we were there in March, um, they also did an experiment uh, for Carnival Festival, uh, the attraction with QR codes, where you got a digital uh, number, so you wouldn't have to wait in line, and you could just get uh, something to drink or to eat, um, and then go to the attraction when your number was up. Um, which I kind of understand because you got this long queue. By that technology, they would actually make it unnecessary to queue up. So I was actually glad to notice that experiment was gone during our last visit this month. Because um, you would need your smartphone for everything. And that's actually already the case. In some restaurants, you can't even get a menu without using your smartphone. We got all the pictures from the attractions digitally with a pass during our last visit and I would uh, actually put my smartphone on airplane mode until I needed it to get those pictures. Um, to or, save your battery. Yeah, to save my battery. And and when we split up and Domin had to be able to reach me, I, I put it back off the, the airplane mode. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I, I put it on airplane mode a lot just to save my battery or it, it wouldn't have lasted the entire day and I would have needed a power bank. And, and there's a lot of people walking around with uh, power banks. Uh, you can see they're charging their phones from their backpacks. Uh, so that's a bit of a downer because all of that modern technology does distract a bit from the atmosphere in the park. And the whole idea is to escape from modern society for a while and waiting in line almost, uh, yeah, it, it is part of the attraction. So it would be, uh, I would be sad if that all yeah, but I would have to add to that that I'm currently using a dumb phone and um, I, uh, during our last visit I didn't feel like some kind of, you know, what, moron? No, what do they call it, um, second class citizen <laughs> or something like that. I didn't, I didn't feel like that at all. Um, That's good. Th yeah. There were QR based options for everything, but it, it didn't feel like you had to have, what, have a Except because in I one of the phone. in one of the restaurants, you couldn't get a menu. You had to scan the yeah, QR code, and I hate that. Yeah, because <laughs> you, you know we just hope they don't drive it too far, because we just love having a chat with the person at the hotel desk, or uh, if only just to mention what a great job everyone is doing and how pleasant our stay was. And we love the visual style of the Efteling, so we prefer actual menus to those ugly QR codes because I think nothing radiates less atmosphere than a QR code. It's the ugliest thing. It reminds ever me invented. of COVID. It just uh, QR just automatically reminds me of COVID. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but but also it's like it's it's really it's the ugliest thing out there. And there it's are actually a, apps where thing, you yeah. can create a more or less um, visually. Uh, more better, attractive. but yeah, more attractive QR code, but it just it didn't become a thing, right? You don't see that very often. It's it's just yeah, the, the because you have to be able dots. to identify it as a QR code right away. I guess I, I, I think that I might guess, be. I guess, yeah, uh, yeah, and we actually have a funny story about uh, some guys uh, in March. Yeah, the, the, the teenagers. Yeah, <laughs> in Symbolica. Yeah. There, there you have this attraction with amazing details while, while queuing, uh, while waiting in line. And there were these, these guys. They and were they, teenagers. They were teenagers. And they all had their smartphones and they were scrolling and watching one TikTok video after another. And they went as friends, so they were there together in a theme park, waiting in line where there was all kinds of stuff to do and to listen to and to, to, um, to watch. And still, they were they were watching these TikTok videos all the time. And barely talking to each other. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> see them talking to each other. It was the saddest thing I'd ever seen. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and even our, our small ones, they noticed and they, they commented on it. They said like, Yeah, very loudly and <laughs> unabashedly and I kind of <laughs> love that. <laughs> I, I'm not sure you but should... But of course, this is not the Efteling's fault at all. That no, teenagers of, of are course like not. But I'm, I'm just saying, I'm not sure you should even go to the steam park. Then, then I think there are better alternatives for you if you... Yes, I, like a rehabilitation I, I center. To, <laughs> or... <laughs> I just wanted to illustrate that um, 
the park is not about that. The park is really, even though it has all the modern technology, it's really about just being in another world, uh, just cutting off from everyday life and, and experiencing something really unique. And I think the worst thing you can do then is, is uh, watch TikTok videos. The worst thing you can do most of the time is watch TikTok videos. <laughs> I I'm not on TikTok. <laughs> I am. Um, uh, I dance on TikTok. <laughs> I've got about a million followers. Yeah, sure. No. <laughs> the one dance you did it was your wedding dance. That was yeah. the only, the only dance you ever did in your life that I'm aware of. <laughs> <laughs> and sober. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Let's move on. So yeah, um, Domin talked about COVID. Uh, during the COVID crisis, uh, they did whatever they could uh, to retain the atmosphere of the park, and they worked really hard. And though they tried their very best to keep the immersion, we didn't want our experience uh, or experience tainted by wearing mouth masks and elbow cuffing and keeping distance and all that jazz. It's so, just not very magical. <laughs> <laughs> so we actually stayed away until it had blown over completely. And that was really hard as, uh, yeah, we were a bit addicted, as you may have noticed. Usually we go at least once a year. At least. At least. Often twice. And now we stayed away uh, for three years or so, but uh, it made our return in March all the merrier. Yes. And now we went back in July for two days, so um, I think we... <laughs> Overall, really good job to incorporate modern technology. Absolutely. Um, without overdoing it, I think. Yeah. So we, do, we just hope... We don't have... Actually, we, I don't think we have any criticism on the park. It's just we hope that it, it keeps this magical atmosphere and that it will never change. It's kind of... Because everything is changing me, these days. For me, it's this... Yeah, that's it. For me, it's this... You know, like, I think it's the experience that I hear a lot of people talk about that they had when they saw the new uh, Top Gun movie with Tom Cruise last year. I hear, heard a lot of people say that... We it, should watch it. Uh, yeah, I have, haven't still haven't it. seen it, but a lot of people said that they felt like it was going to the movies back in the 90s. Like, it was like like time had stood still and like it was a movie from, you know, from a time when there wasn't all that BS that we have today and you could just enjoy a movie and have fun. It was just, just a good movie. You know, I, that's what I hear a lot of people say. Well, for, for us... That's the experience we have at the Efteling. It's like, it's it. Nothing's changed. They they haven't, you know, abandoned what it is at the core. It's, yeah. it's still very much this old-fashioned, traditional, European-based fairy tale atmosphere to it. I mean, they do have, uh, you know, stuff from all over the world, um, but I mean, it 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 retains a certain authenticity exactly um, and it really transports you back in time it feels like that it fe that's what i meant by you return from narnia when you get back home it's like you're in another world and i hope it never never ever loses that it's, yeah uh, it's it's amazing that way yeah exactly yeah a and that's what you want right uh, a theme park is all for just forgetting about your daily life and just having fun it's like you don't want to you don't want to uh, get messages or, th or there's a specific feeling that i got uh, that that i have almost every time when we're in the efteling um there's one of the rides when you're on the the there's a, a, a monorail with snails well the carts are kind of they're shaped like snails yeah it's uh, in at Land van Laaf, which yeah. is another unique thing in the Efteling that yeah. they have invented. It's, it's kind of a village of these sort of hobbit-like creatures yeah. whose houses <coughs> are all crooked and weird. And it's very charming. And Anyway, uh, but while you're riding that monorail, you, you ride right past the, the outer wall of the park. And you can look outside of the park and see the normal world. <laughs> for a second and it feels so jarring to see <laughs> normal modern day buildings and a street and cars and it's like 
why does everything have to be so Damn ugly, ugly <laughs> and boring? <laughs> yeah. When you're inside the park, everything's hear, yeah. beautiful and everything is it's, it's fun and mysterious and magical. And, and you look outside, and why hear, does yeah. everything have to look like, you know, like the most boring, ugly thing you can possibly imagine? Right. You know, it made me feel like, why are we doing this to ourselves? It, it feels it's, like you're, yeah. you're, uh, you're doing this slow um, ride in, in, uh, on a certain height, right? Yeah. And then you can see the entire Laugh uh, village, which, which are yeah. these hobbit-like creatures. And you can see their school and you can yeah. see their mayor. And, and actually, it feels like when you're looking at the outside world, it feels like that's not normal. And that's what I mean. Inside yeah. the park is what's normal. <laughs> yeah, and I think there's something to that. Um, and it's it's another yeah. cool uh, attraction. I think if it were an English uh, ride, they should call it the snails, the the snails rails or something. <laughs> snails on rails. Snails on rails, something <laughs> like that. Yeah. Um, Not uh, snails on a plane. And and I forgot about that yeah. because they do this tiny little thing to make this. Uh, a very very cool attraction it, it's it's a slow ride so it's not exciting or anything but they give every um, snail a name yeah and it's just it's just on on the ride and uh, they do the same thing with the the, the, the small cars that uh, the, the little kids can drive uh, their right. own they give all these cars a theme uh, one is uh, from a bakery and it has a name uh, from a bakery and it's it's decorated like that and it has uh, loaves of bread in the trunk and stuff yeah. like that and every car has yeah. a story it, yeah. it's it's amazing also every sort of you know <coughs> poster with some kind of you know boring practical public message on it like watch out for this or always remember to do that even those you know they do it, uh, make it look like a parchment with, uh, you know, with, you know, letters written with some quill, and and it rhymes. It yeah. always rhymes. Yeah, exactly. Everything rhymes. Even when <laughs> when uh, a, a ride is closed temporarily for maintenance, they they don't put a, a message there closed for maintenance. No, they put actually a, a rhyme there. Uh, yeah, uh, see, when I talk about, talk about the authentic stuff, also one of the things that I love is that when you're in the fairy tale forest, you know, they always have a voiceover who um, who tells the the story of the fairy tale, mm -hmm. um, and they don't do it the way Disney would do it, by making it sort of uh, funny and cool and and no, they tell it in. In the most traditional way possible, and they use these old-fashioned Dutch words that we would read in our, you know, sixty-year-old fairy tale books. Yeah, um, exactly. You know, or, or you know, we words we wouldn't use anymore today. And, and yeah, that's and of that, course something international guests would miss. Yeah, that's sad. But still, in the fairy tale forest, you find these big uh, fairy tale books with every uh, fairy tale. Where you can read the the fairy tale in in uh, all most common yeah. languages, right? Yeah. And uh, the the more recent attractions like Symbolica, they actually have um, a multilingual uh, storytelling at the beginning that has some uh, German words and some uh, th that you have the gist of the attraction, yeah. what what the idea is. The, you don't get the the entire translation, but you get the idea in your in your mother tongue and that really adds a lot to the experience as well there's just um so yeah there's just w everything has a uh, a kind of that's what i meant that they don't change they don't adapt they don't try to make it more modern in any way they just keep it in 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 the old-fashioned style and feel which is exactly what makes it so charming it's really charming. I don't. And there's almost nothing else that does that anymore these days. So it's true. I love that. So it's like yeah. reading a reading a book by J.R.R. Tolkien or C.S. Lewis. And you just know, with the Efteling, just like with Tolkien, there will never be a second. It's it's so authentic. If there should be a third uh, world war someday, and it gets destroyed, you just know 
they will have to rebuild it or there will never be another Efteling again anywhere else. It's so unique. Um, and, and we hope it, it never loses that unique charm. We, and we recommend everyone to put a trip uh, to the Efteling on their bucket list. Everyone who is into fantasy uh, or is creative in any way or form. Uh, you will definitely get inspired and you'll find all the information about the theme park in the description. Um, and and we know it, it... It really sounds like they paid us to make this. And it, it might actually be a disadvantage because didn't. last time we were there, it was actually quite calm in the park. It was not uh, like it was overly crowded mm. and uh, it was not like you had to wait... Uh, half an hour for every attraction so we know that by sending all of our listeners all these millions of people to the afternoon you know, it will get overcrowded if we if we <laughs> ever do um you know somehow make a lot of money what we'd love to do <laughs> in another life <laughs> what we love to do is just you know take all of our uh, our uh, our patrons our, our our friends from who you know who've been supporting audio epics uh and you know treat them to um, a few days at the afternoon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's do I've, that. I've actually been brainstorming about uh, creating a tier uh, in our Patreon, uh, on our Patreon platform, to be able to do that, like uh, take you to the Efteling for at least two days, because you know when you're actually when you're from abroad, you should really book at least. Now, two of course, days. there are people who just hate theme parks, and I don't blame them at all. Um, I can completely understand why you would hate the theme parks but I do believe that this one's different from most I really do yeah but it's still a theme park of course yeah and I think um, besides our dream to uh, be full-time storytellers I think our second dream is to just buy a house in the middle of the Efteling and live there for the rest of our lives and never see one glimpse of the outside world again <laughs> <laughs> no, it sounds a bit over the top. So yeah, that's that's why on my birthday I wanted to actually share uh, that enthusiasm about this park uh, because it's truly an amazing experience. And we will make sure to um, put the official website in the description, the YouTube channel. Um, uh, the Efteling has a YouTube channel where you can just, uh, if you want to it you can see all the rides there are no commercials on their youtube channel which is something i appreciate yeah and even if you've watched the attractions it's not the same if you go there you no but just, it, yeah. it can give you an idea of it what can it give looks you an idea like. uh, maybe assess whether it's uh it's something for you like if you're uh, not fond of spinning cups then yeah um but uh yeah it, it gives you an idea but it's the same way a screenshot of a video gives you an idea of what the video game feels like. Yeah, maybe that would be a good comparison. And then we will uh, link. Uh, we will also link the YouTube channel of uh, a fellow enthusiast, Eftel Wesley, who has actually dedicated an entire uh, YouTube channel to this park, and he goes there. Like I think he's there every day or something. I think he works there, maybe. Perhaps, but he's really enthusiastic and he puts all kinds of videos on his channel about the afternoon. And of course, uh, we hope you will check out our, uh, our own stories. Yeah, if, and if you like the afternoon, especially the Will of the Woods, um, uh, and if you listen to this after we made the Wizard of the Woods, also the Wizard of the Woods, um, because those, I, I think, do have a kind of an afternoon vibe to them. Yeah, they are our most fairy tale like uh, stories. Um, but also, yeah, the, the story set in Druda about the character uh, Ludlof, uh, the witch hunter. L uh, like we said, uh, there's a lot of influence uh, from the Efteling that just found its way in our, in our other stories as well. Yeah. As well. yeah um uh, um, you know, Anton Peake's uh, illustrations were certainly an inspiration for the look of Seven Peaks as well, in my mind. Yeah, I can see that. Um, so it's it's truly amazing, and we hope that by uh, if you reach uh, this podcast to the end, that we have inspired you 
and that you will check out uh, the spark, which is really unique and charming and authentic and the amazing. end. And they lived happily ever after. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time. Bye. <laughs>